Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to replace the bearings on a Vitamix blender container using some basic hand tools, a vise, and some thread locker. I have the 5200 model, but I think this should apply for pretty much all of their blenders. Okay, full disclosure. I've actually already replaced the bearings in the blender that I'm going to show you guys today but I thought I would go back and redo the process after seeing that there was really no good videos out there showing how to replace the actual bearings. Oh, these bearings? Nothing special. Just basic uh, skateboard bearings. You can pick them up on Amazon. Uh, make sure you buy the sealed ones. Okay, so let's get into this. The first thing you've got to do is get that giant retaining nut off of the bottom. You could buy that tool on Amazon or from uh, Vitamix for $13 uh, or maybe use a pair of pliers like this. Uh, if it is really stuck on there, um, I don't know, maybe uh, use a pair of pliers and some channel locks to um, really get some torque to remove that. Mine actually just uh, came off uh, using uh, my hand. It was actually not that tight at all. Blade might require a few taps to break it loose, but uh, just tap it lightly. You don't want to damage anything. Uh, so here you see the um, new bearings in there, and I actually needed to redo this also. Um, I did put uh, the wrong adhesive in there. Oh, uh, this is a good time, too, when you've got it apart to clean the blade really well and the container. It's a lot easier to clean with the blade removed. Uh, here I show the bearings. Uh, the old bearings up close. Uh, one of them was just kind of old and dirty, and uh, this one here was just really fried, completely melted, uh, the rubber seals, and uh, it wouldn't even turn, and uh, it's all uh, just goopy melted rubber on there. Okay, with the blade assembly out, we now have to get that gear off of the bottom. Uh, just put it into a vise on the flat sides, and uh, you know don't don't uh, squish the, the threads in the vise, and do not uh, damage that black O-ring either when you're putting it in the vise. All right, so the gear just pries off. Uh, it's really best to use a couple screwdrivers and pry it up. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. Just pry it up evenly and um, it will come off without too much effort. Again, um, when you put that in the vise, uh, it doesn't need to be too tight. It's just there to hold it. Next step to remove the blade. Okay, so here you want to be careful. Um, I put it in the vise uh, very uh, loosely. You don't want to uh, damage that shaft at all. Uh, just grab the th a 3 8 inch wrench and uh, that nut comes off the top real easy. There, um, There's a washer. There, the blade. And uh, then another washer underneath there. Again, uh, do, don't put it in that vise too tightly. For this next step, we have to take the bearings and shaft out from the um, outer threaded base piece. And uh, what I used was a 7 8 inch socket which is larger than the bearings, but uh, small enough to um, press against the uh, threaded part of the base. Since we'll be using the vise as a press again, we need to put that nut back on so that the threads don't get ruined. Again, if you remember, I've already taken these bearings out once and replaced them, and I did use the wrong adhesive, so I'm walking through this again, but uh, these bearings for me in this video, um, they're going to come out really easy. But these are the steps that I used to remove them the first time. 
So line the socket up uh, really well. Keep everything nice and straight and uh, make sure you're not pushing on the bearing but on the outer uh, threaded base part and just keep applying pressure and the bearings will start to slide out. What happens here is you can only push so far and you run out of thread because uh, the nut hits the base. So you need to uh, unthread that nut a little bit more so that you can uh, put it back in the vise and continue pushing down on it some more. Eventually what happens is you can only push so far with that nut in place and the bearings might still not be out all of the way. So um, go ahead and take that nut off and um, you might uh, be okay if you continue to press uh, press it the way that uh, we were just doing or uh, what I decided to do is put it back in the vise and put the threaded portion on top of the jaws but did not tighten the jaws uh, so tight so that it is they are holding on to the bearings you know this way the bearings can still drop off uh, drop out of the bottom and um, the base is still in place so um, you can use a tap or something like that and just uh, lightly tap down on that threaded portion and uh, the bearings and shaft should come out. Next we press the bearings off of the shaft. What I used was an 8 millimeter deep well socket uh, just big enough to go around the shaft and uh, small enough to push just on the center of the bearings. The bearings can be pressed off in either direction, but uh, pick a direction and stick with it. The shaft will have uh, just kind of natural markings where the bearings once were, and you're going to want to take note of that um, and how the shaft looks so when you're putting the bearings back on, you'll know exactly where to put them. I used an old piece of oak flooring on the vise to protect the shaft while I pressed it. You want to make sure that you are everything is lined up uh, very straight. You don't want to push the bearing off crooked because it, will, uh, it, it won't do good things to the shaft if you do that. Just keep everything very, very straight. So here one of the bearings comes off and uh, what's in between the bearings is uh, some type of a, a wave washer and um, I try to get it closer to the camera here but the washer is on mine is a little bit messed up. Um, it's not perfect but uh, so far it seems to be doing the job after I cleaned it up and uh, then a, another washer also here between the, the bearings which, is, uh, which was fine for mine. Then just continue the process for the second bearing. I don't go through the whole thing here, but uh, again, just make sure you're, you're pressing it off uh, very, very straight. With the bearings off, it's time to put the new bearings on. So uh, clean the shaft. Again, uh, take a look at the shaft and you'll see where the old bearings were before. Just uh, put the new ones back on in the same direction you took the old ones off and uh, press them on to the same spot that they were in before. When putting the bearings on, uh, the same things apply as, as for taking them off. Uh, just make sure that, again, everything is uh, very, very straight uh, on the vise. The socket is straight, the, the shaft is straight, everything is, is lined up just right. And start pressing it back on uh, very slowly. If it takes a lot of force, then something is not going right and uh, try to realign everything. Or um, if it keeps doing that, then uh, try pushing the bearing on from the other side. From here, it's just a matter of putting the two washers and the other bearing back on. Again, press it back on until it uh, looks like it's in the same location that uh, the bearings were in when you took them off. Okay. 
Now it's time to get the uh, shaft and bearings back into the threaded base. Uh, what I used is a Loctite 243 and I put a pretty decent amount on the side of the bearings. Uh, wipe the oil or any uh, oil residue that um, might be on the side of the bearings before you put this on there. Uh, clean out that threaded base and uh, really these just kind of go right back in there there's a lot of room they don't need to be pressed or forced in there at all keep in mind this loctite takes 24 hours to cure so um, i waited a day to use my blender then it's simply a matter of putting the uh, washer back on the blade uh, the top washer and uh, tightening the nut um, on the top of the blade. I put it back in the vise and quickly tightened it up with the 3 8 Almost done. Uh, we just need to get that uh, little gear back on to the bottom of the shaft. Um, this may have been easier to do before putting the blade on um, using that uh, old piece of uh, wood flooring, though I, I really didn't have an issue. The blades weren't um, getting bent here at all. But yeah, just line everything up again very straight and using the vise, that gear will press back onto the bottom of the shaft, no problem. Finally, all that's left is to get the blade assembly back onto the container. Just uh, goes in and uh, I just tightened the bottom, that big weighted nut by hand. Mine came off uh, by hand, so I just put it back on hand tighten. So that's it. Hope I was able to help. Uh, hey, if you liked the video, hit the like button. Thanks.